All right, y'all, welcome to the show. I got a great one for you. So right off the bat here, we're going to be discussing the new polls that just dropped. And look, to put it simply, Kamala keeps skyrocketing. She keeps going up and up and up and up. So I'll give you those numbers. Uh, then we'll get to Trump outdoes himself yet again and tells an insane lie about trans surgeries in school. I mean, what am I supposed to say? Jesus Christ. All right. Then we'll get to um, the Trump deli meat deregulation. Now the chickens are coming home to roost over that policy that Trump pursued. And uh, we have people dying. People dying as a result of poisoned deli meat. And the reason it is poisoned is because we took away the referees. We took away the cops on the beat, making sure that our food is not poisoned and toxic. So we'll get to that. And then... Um, Later on, man, I got quite a video for you. I got to be honest, guys. Uh, as somebody who is in independent media, in this new media space, I got to keep it real. I think independent media is fucked. I do. I think uh, independent media has largely lost their way. Um, they are... I know we criticize mainstream media a lot and corporate media a lot, and we should, and I stand by my criticisms of uh, that industry. But let's be honest, independent media has their own problems, and they're honestly just as severe as mainstream media's problems, so I'll break that down for you a little bit later. Uh, and more. So everybody do me a big favor, subscribe, helps out massively, costs you nothing. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. So let's start with this. So we got some new numbers uh, about Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, uh, and I gotta break this down for you. So first, our boy Tim, um, here are his net favorables. He went in Minnesota from plus 15 to plus 19, just through the roof. People just like this guy. There's something about his vibe. They just fucking like him. And honestly, I got to keep it real. I don't even think it's necessarily because his record is so phenomenal. I don't know how many people know a lot about his record. I think he just gives off like down to earth vibes where people are like, yeah, I like that guy. He seems down to earth. But to the extent people do know about his policy record, I think the thing he's most known for is doing free school breakfast and free school lunch for kids. And that's going to make people like you. Okay, so he's plus 19 in Minnesota, plus 16 in Michigan, plus 14 in Wisconsin, plus 13 in Georgia, plus 13 in Nevada, plus 12 in Pennsylvania, plus 11 in New Mexico, plus 8 in Arizona, plus 8 in North Carolina, and plus 7 in Florida. By far, the most popular person in this race. If you look at the total scope, so you got Tim Walls, Kamala Harris, uh, J.D. Vance, and Donald Trump. Tim Walls is by far the most popular person in this race. Okay. But I got more. So compare this to J.D. Vance. Look at this. Here's his net favorable polling average. This isn't state by state. This is the overall one, but you get the picture. On July 18th, Vance was underwater, minus 3.3 percentage points. Uh, by July 25th, he had dropped to 5.3 percentage points underwater. Then steadily declining all the way to late August, August 26th, he's down at minus 9.7%. So he's the, he actually, it depends on which poll you look at. In some polls, J.D. Vance is the most disliked person in this race. Uh, in fact, I'd go as far as to say most polls, he's the most disliked. But there are some where Trump is the most disliked in this race. But polar opposite here of Tim Walls. Okay, well, we're just getting started. So a bunch of national polls came out. Um, look at this, guys. RMG poll. Uh, again, national. RMG poll. Harris 51, Trump 48. Clarity Campaign Labs, Harris 51, Trump 45. We should point out, the last poll had it a one-point race. Harris was up. Now, Harris is up six points. Then we get change research. Harris 48, Trump 43. The last poll was dead tied. Now it's a five-point lead for Kamala. Uh, Ledger poll, Harris 50, Trump 46. So that's a four-point lead for uh, Kamala Harris. And, um... The last time they did this poll, she was up by seven. Okay. So in most of the polls, gaining ground, gaining ground, gaining ground. Now we're starting to see the first polls that have Kamala like plus six, right? This is not a number that we had seen previously. Maybe the highest we saw previously was like plus four in some polls here and there. Okay. So again, that just came out the other day. More. Enthusiasm to vote in these various swing states. Let's walk through this here. Uh, Arizona. 88% of Democrats enthusiastic to vote. Republicans, 87% enthusiastic to vote. Basically a statistical tie. Nevada, 
92% of Democrats are enthusiastic to vote. 82% are Republicans. 10-point lead for Democrats. Georgia, 88% of Democrats enthusiastic. Uh, 84% of Republicans enthusiastic. Democrats up four points. North Carolina, 94% of Democrats enthusiastic to vote. 84% of Republicans enthusiastic to vote. Again, 10-point advantage for Democrats. Now, this goes hand-in-hand -hand with the poll that we talked about the other day on Crystal Kyle and Friends. The overall uh, voter enthusiasm, Democrats have pretty significantly. I don't remember the exact number. It was like 10 or 20 points, something like that. Um, so Democrats are up now when it comes to enthusiasm. This is not something we've seen for a very, very long time. Then we get the latest ABC News Ipsos poll. Kamala Harris is now leading Trump by six points nationally among likely voters. 52 to 46. Guys, six points. This race is starting to get away from Trump, right? And the Democrat needs to win by like three points in the Electoral College in order to, or excuse me, three points nationally to win the Electoral College. So there's sort of like a built-in advantage for Republicans with the Electoral College system. At the moment, at least that's how it works in the past few elections. But she's up six. Okay. All right. Do I have any more for you? Yes, I do. Um, Harris seen as more personally favorable and more qualified to be president. So favorability, we got Harris 46, Trump 33, and then even on qualified to be president, you got Harris 53, Trump 47. So in other words, now we're starting to see in topics and areas where usually Republicans have a lead. Now Kamala is starting to lead in on their strong ground, right? Another one is always the economy. Usually for the economy, um, Republicans always have an advantage, sometimes as much as like 20 point advantage on the economy. There was a poll that came out the other week, had Kamala Harris up on Trump by a point when it came to who do you trust with the economy. So when she's winning with the on the economy, she's winning on fav uh, favorability, she's winning on qualified to be president. I guess the Willie Brown attacks didn't work, right? I guess the Trump comments on blowjobs is not really landing pawning off her whole career to blowjobs, which is what he retweeted some shit about that the other day. It's not working. It's not working. So there's only there's only one more domino to fall, I think, guys, for Kamala to have a clean sweep on leading Trump. And it would be if she starts to lead Trump on the issue of who's better on dealing with immigration. That is the one, like, go-to completely solid for Republicans. And my guess is she's closed the gap. It's possible we see at some point she ends up uh, leading on that one too, which would be an absolute game changer. And then finally, let me give you some more favorability ratings in the latest ABC poll. Kamala is plus three in favorability. Tim Walls is plus 11. Donald Trump is minus 25. And J.D. Vance is minus 12. So there is a huge likability gap, man, in this, in this race. There's just a massive likability gap. And uh, it is not looking good for Trump. Look, it, he needs to reverse this trend and he needs to reverse it soon if he doesn't want to have an absolute fucking blowout. Because I got to be honest with you, that's what we're trending towards. And I haven't said anything about the fact that there is a secret contingent of Democratic voters right now, according to the recent elections. In the special elections, Democrats massively outperformed the polls. In the 2022 midterms, Democrats outperformed the polls. Now, back before that, it was actually the opposite. In 2016 and 2020, it was Trump who overperformed the polls. This time, now he's underperforming. In fact, in the Republican primary, when he was up against Nikki Haley, he would underperform the polls by about eight points. So if we have that secret Democratic vote, if Trump is overestimated in the polls, and now all the information is coming out, by the way, voter registration is skyrocketing among black women. So all the signs are really not looking good for Trump. And uh, now this is the first time we're having a conversation about polls where Kamala Harris is up six points. By the way, to put that in perspective for you, at this point before the 2012 election, at this point before the 2012 election, Barack Obama was only up one percentage point on Mitt Romney. One. And he ended up winning that race pretty comfortably. So there you have it. The big guy's in trouble. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.